I'm Beth Whitworth, race car driving, quilt making, CPA firm owning, wife, mom, and boss. I'm here to help you build a business you love by sharing all of the good, the bad, the ugly, and the excellent sides of working in this industry. It's not always easy, but after many years, I can finally say it's worth it. Let me guide you on your journey to accounting with confidence. Working in the accounting profession and having a career in the accounting field has historically not been considered very exciting. There are so many stereotypes that exist and that are portrayed on TV and in the movies that sort of bring us out as being boring and without a sense of humor. It's a running joke in my household that I'm an accountant and anytime there's a portrayal on TV, I get that look from either my husband or my daughter that is like, hey, that might be you. While I do possess some of those characteristics, I'm an introvert, I really like to work by myself, I do like to solve a problem. I still consider myself to be the anti-accountant. I'm the one who has been kind of bucking the system through the years. And when I started to think about that, you know, my career started a long time ago. And during that time, we've progressed through some of the greatest changes in our industry. When I started, there were no computerized work papers. There was no way to do uh, internet research on tax laws. There was no internet, no social media, no chance of working remotely. It wasn't even in our language. And podcasting, that wasn't a term we were using 25 years ago. So why am I doing this now? Well, I'm going to tell you the story on how I got to where I am right now. And really to begin, it's going to be a story of, you know, how I started in this industry and it was it was moving very rapidly. And it was moving rapidly, but the profession itself was notoriously known for being slow moving. And in some respects, it still is. I mean, come on, we still have to actually call the IRS if we want to get a hold of them and wait on hold. So it's it's really that piece of our profession is pretty antiquated. But during this time, it really gave me the ability to test my entrepreneurial spirit and to find areas in the industry that I could provide expertise to my clients and to my team as it began to grow. And through the years of lots of trial and error, learning and growing, I finally achieved a goal in my firm that has been elusive. I've been doing this a hot second and I have finally designed my firm to run without me. And how did that happen? Well, let me let me tell you. So about six years ago, I was looking for answers. I was looking at for answers on how to get back to running a firm that I even liked. I think I mentioned this in episode one that, you know, I was to a point where I was feeling trapped. I was feeling stuck. I just didn't like what I was doing, let alone love what I was doing. And I determined during that soul searching that I needed to put a deadline in place on how many more tax seasons I wanted to have. What would be required of me for the how many more years of my life? So at that time, I picked the goal of eight more years. At that point, my daughter, Sam, was a freshman in high school, and that would get us through her high school years. And then it would also give four years of college. So that when she was graduating from college, I knew that that year after she graduated, I would not be in the thick of tax season. So over the years, tax seasons have been good, bad, ugly. <laughs> I can't say that they've ever been excellent. I mean, there's been some good ones, but it's really a difficult time of year. There's a lot of work crammed into a very short period of time, and it puts a lot of pressure on the team. It puts a lot of pressure on me, and I realized that this, this is something that I didn't want to 
do at when when I'm ready to retire, I don't want to still be worrying about those April 15th extensions. So when I set the deadline at that point, I didn't know if I would be selling my farm to get out of those tax seasons, if I would just be cutting off that part of the firm by cutting tax services out of what our offerings were, or figuring out a way to have a practice that didn't require me to be in the lead. Now, that third option seemed unlikely at the time. I was the one who was still reviewing every single return that left the firm. I was the one reviewing every set of monthly or quarterly work papers on a client. So it just seemed like a pipe dream. It seemed unrealistic. And it felt like I wanted to be able to have my cake and eat it too. But it really was the option that I wanted. Selling the firm would come with some pieces that most firms want the person in charge to stay on for three to five years after the sale. Well, I don't want to. I did not want to be working for someone else after I sold my firm. And cutting out the tax services, well, it's a really profitable part of our business. So the third option had me having someone else running that part of my business, having the team being in charge of those deadlines and that tax season, and me not feeling a shift in my workload. So eight years was the goal. By 2024 tax season, in some way, shape, or form, I needed to be done with that very stressful yet profitable part of my business. And as we all know, it turns out that setting the goal sometimes is the easy part, and making it happen has not been so easy. So that was six years ago. It's been stressful, it's been expensive, and at times it went back to really feeling like it was impossible, that I was going to have to make decisions that I didn't wanna make. Like I didn't want to cut out tax services, I didn't want to sell the, the firm. So recognizing that the only way to make any of this happen was to somehow get the firm to run without me. And what that translated into was I had to give up some control and I had to trust the team. So if you listen to my previous episode, I believe it was episode one, I don't want to have partners. I've had some partnerships that didn't go so well. And I've had some things that have happened that caused me not to trust people on my team before. So these were some pretty big hurdles that I needed to overcome. Once I got my head around those two ideas, of giving up control and learning to trust, I started to make some significant progress. I started to make decisions with the end result in mind. I started to delegate things that someone else could do. And much to my, I guess my my dismay, oftentimes my team can do what I was doing way better than I could do it. So it took me some mental energy to get behind the fact that I don't have to do it all. And if I don't do it all, it can oftentimes get done much better. I started looking to my team to troubleshoot issues, to communicate with clients, and make more decisions without my input. I worked with a coach to improve my hiring process and the team building efforts were structured around the goal of me getting work off of my plate prior to tax season with the ultimate goal being that I would not be working as much during tax seasons. So it was all going how I wanted it to go. And it was slow. I mean, like I said, I set the goal. Here I am six years into it and I'm getting there. I'm feeling pretty good. I'm not quite there. I don't feel like I could take a grandiose vacation during that tax season, but I felt like I was finally on the right track. And at the end of that sixth tax season this year, I was faced with a new challenge. And right at the end of tax season, I was diagnosed with breast cancer, literally days left in the season. I was shocked. I was scared. I was overwhelmed. It was a difficult time and it was made 
even more difficult by the fact that it was the end of tax season. And here I am, I'm getting a little emotional, but bear with me. So it was super, super difficult and scary. But the ultimate outcome and the prognosis is excellent. I've, you know, I'm in recovering and so far so good. But my treatment involved taking nearly eight weeks off this past summer, completely, completely off. I wasn't answering emails. I wasn't taking phone calls. I had no meetings. I wasn't really even touching base with my team. I was healing and recovering and really mentally getting around the fact that I have cancer and I have to focus on my health. So during those eight weeks, the only thing I did that was relating to the firm was run payroll, including my own. I continued to get paid through those eight weeks and everything else went on without me. Meetings with clients were handled by my team. Work got done and reviewed. We had new leads coming in and there was a process in place to get those new leads vetted and onboarded. I had clients that came on and work had already started before I was even back. I didn't even know who they were. And for the first time in my career, there were clients that weren't forward-facing to me. They, they hired the firm, but they didn't have to talk to me first. And I've been in business a very long time. And, and in this version of the business, about 15 years. And that has never happened. So all the things happened in my firm, and except payroll, and that was only because I ran out of time to get that delegated. And most of my clients didn't even know I was out. It was business as usual. And as I healed and recovered and started feeling better and getting more energy, I realized that this was it. This was proof that my firm could run without me, that I'm going to make it to that eight-year goal. So what did I do? I returned to work, but I didn't take back any of the day-to-day -day work that had been successfully delegated to my team. None of the administrative pieces, none of the day-to-day -day bookkeeping work, none of the reviewing. I began sharing some of the vetting process for leads. I, I did start taking on some of that. But I figured out that as I healed and grew stronger, that the firm would keep running and I would work on our next phase, growing and scaling, streamlining, all of those pieces that are going to continue into the future and keep our firm strong. And so now I can work on my firm and not in my firm. And in doing this, I'm even working less, much less. And it took me a while. I don't, I don't even think as of now that I'm even up to working 40 hours a week again. And no one on my team works full time. So when all this dust settled from my recovery and everything was progressing nicely with both my health and the firm, I decided to finally launch my podcast. So why a podcast and why now? Well, this year has taught me a lot, a lot about myself, a lot about my family and my firm. And it proved to me that all the work I have done over the years succeeded. It's not perfect. It also made me wish that I had done it so much sooner, which is why I want to share the lessons with you in hopes that you find some help in turning your firm into something that works for you and that you love. I want you to be able to take time off guilt-free, you know, step away from your business because you want to, or you know, if circumstances warrant it, that you have to, like I did. I, I needed to take the time off and it was scary. But if I had not have done, done the work prior and all the work that I has been leading up to this in the last six years, I would have been so much more stressed out. I would have possibly had, you know, cash flow issues. I would have not been able to take the time 
that I really needed the time to heal. So, but while I was doing this, I learned a lot about what I needed to do to, for this firm from listening to podcasts, from other people's perspectives, from mindset to hiring, from the different software options that are out there for various processes to how to price my services. I have heard so many perspectives for free by listening to podcasts. I found the coach that I ended up hiring to help me with my hiring process by listening to a podcast. She was a guest on someone else's episode. And I thought, wow, I need to listen to her. So I started listening to her podcast. And then what happened? I ended up hiring her. And she was a, just a very important part of getting me to the place I was this year in order to succeed. So I got ideas for so many things from podcasts. So starting a podcast specific to the things that you need to build a firm that you love seemed like the best thing to do with my newfound time. Remember I said it wasn't easy and there were some mindset shifts I had to make. There were some investments in learning and technology and that building of the trust with my team and the process wasn't quick and it isn't done. It's an evolving and continuously ongoing process. It's a journey and that journey is so, so worth it. So I have two tax seasons left on my timeline, but I realized that I didn't put any stipulations in there that, you know, I couldn't be done sooner, you know, I think this tax season will see me working less than I ever have, or if it's not less work, it will be different work. It will be me working on my firm and continuing the growth and the scaling rather than working in my firm in entering tax return information and reviewing 1099s and all of those other tasks that the, in his, historically have been part of my job. So in closing, really, that's my story. That's the story of why I started this podcast. And your key takeaways from this are one, long-term goals are just that. They're long-term. So don't lose sight of them. Keep them in play. Know what the result is that you want, and it will help you make the decisions that come up in your business easier. Because if it doesn't help you get to that end result, then it's probably isn't a decision that you need, need right now. And two, don't wait to take action. You never know what challenges life is going to throw your way. I am living proof that anything can happen. And like I said, had I not started on this journey of making my knowing that my firm needed to run without me, I would have been so much more stressed out this summer and this year in trying to figure out how to keep my firm running and not lose clients and not lose team members and all of those things that I was able to just not even focus on. I never had the thought that, oh my gosh, you know, I have to close my firm for eight weeks that it was never a thought. I never had to think who is going to do this work. I had already laid the groundwork. And little did I know that the groundwork that I started laying so that I wouldn't have to be involved in tax seasons after eight those eight years really was a piece of the business that needed to happen anyway. If you're in any type of seasonal work or you work for clients, and that work has to happen, such as payroll and bookkeeping and tax work, then it needs to happen whether or not you can do it or not. And having the processes in place to make sure that that's happening is priceless. Because like I said, you, you never know what types of challenges life is going to throw at you. And my third takeaway is to listen to Accounting with Confidence each week to hear how I did it. It wasn't always perfect. It wasn't always sunshine and rainbows, but 
I have learned so much on this journey and it, it started before six years ago, but th- what I have done in the last six years has built this firm into something that I love. So thanks for listening. I will see you next week. And if you need me, you know where to find me. Thanks for listening. I always end my weekly team meetings with have a great week. If you need me, you know where to find me. And I realized I said that. And with this whole podcasting thing, it's new and you may not know where to find me. Go to accountingwithconfidence.com and while you're there, sign up for six easy ways to reclaim time in your accounting firm and that will keep us connected. Have a great week.